None of us wants to get caught in any trap, whether that be literally or figuratively. But countless nonprofit leaders fall into three traps that greatly affect their ability to be successful in fundraising. In this video, I'll identify those three traps and show you how to avoid them or better yet, escape if you've already fallen prey to one or more of them. Let's begin now. Several years ago, I was helping an arm of our organization coordinate a local vision dinner. I asked all the staff on that team to consider inviting their personal supporters, those donors who give to fund their individual efforts with our organization. One staff member made the bold decision to invite a couple who he intended to ask for his own personal support. At the end of the night, we found the couple gave $25,000 towards the local budget. On Monday morning, I shared the news with the staff member, and although he was excited for the organization, I could tell there was a part of him that was a bit disappointed that he missed the opportunity to get them to give to his efforts specifically. I thanked him for what appeared to be a major sacrifice on his part, getting someone to give to the whole instead of to the one. Three days later, he bounded into the office, excited to tell me that the same couple gave $25,000 electronically to his efforts, most likely when they got home from the dinner that night or soon after. I was so excited for him, not only for the gift, but because he did the right thing and avoided that trap that donors only want to give to one program project or individual within an organization. There are three traps that you must avoid to be successful in fundraising. They are as follows. Trap number one, the donor only wants to give to our organization. Face this fact head on. Your donor or partner gives to organizations in addition to yours. I know this sounds basic and simple, but so true. Donors rarely put all their eggs into one basket, just as a shrewd investor diversifies their portfolio with many investments, a donor or partner will give to more than one pro nonprofit organization to spread around the effectiveness. For many donors or partners, the idea is to disperse their giving so that at least a little is given to many. That's why it's important that you look for a way to stand out above all the others amongst the noise of many voices speaking into the ears of your donors. It's vital that you look for consistent and creative ways to inform and appreciate your donors or partners. For example, if I'm an organization that works with high school or college students, get the students to write thank you letters to donors immediately following a recent gift or just after a conference where a scholarship has been provided. If you're providing water filters to communities in, in impoverished nations, consider ways you can bring examples of all that, cl that, that clean water brings to the community. You can send short video clips embedded in emails, texts, or in social media showing changed lives as a result of this life-saving tool. Also consider providing multiple opportunities for a donor within your organization. Data proves that when a person gives to multiple projects, programs, or people within that organization, that donor is more loyal, consistent, and gives more to that organization. There are limits to how much donors will give to certain efforts. It appears that a donor will give between $5,000 and $10,000 to an individual raising their own funding, in the case of an individual missionary, for example. They won't give any more than $10,000 because they do not want one person to become too dependent on them. Whereas giving to a project or program can yield gifts in the six, or in some ca rare cases, seven-figure range. Trap number two. Donors who hear of multiple opportunities from one organization will get confused and take away money from one program to give to another. When our organization started the Vision Dinner Strategy, staff were asked to invite donors who gave to their individual efforts. Not surprisingly, the staff were very reluctant because they felt that if corporate needs of the organization were presented, their donors would shift their giving from the individual to the corporate need. 
but some staff rightly believe that inviting their personal donors can help increase their individual giving. One staff woman invited not only her own supporters, but individuals who had previously turned her down. The night of the dinner, all her guests gave to the corporate need for a total of $20,000, but many also gave special gifts to her individual needs to the tune of $1,000. In addition, she also saw 100 in new monthly gifts from individuals who had rejected her appeal before. What happened? Donors or partners gave corporately because they loved the vision of the organization they heard that night but they also gave individually to her efforts because they better understood where her work fit in the big picture of the organization's strategies. Those who already gave to her individual efforts were happier to be supporting the individual staff member. The dinner actually affirmed their decision to give to her, but those who never gave to her finally understood that she was accomplishing great things. As one staff said, the dinner is my best support appointment of the entire year. Trap number three, I can't ask them. They're already giving all they can. This quite possibly could be the biggest trap of them all. Many donors or partners view giving through the lens of an investor. Any good investor is likely to be fully vested. But like any good investor, they're always looking for a better investment. Or it can be said they're looking for an investment that matches up better with the burden that has been placed on their heart. Don't fall into the trap of making decisions for your donors or partners. I've seen nonprofit leaders assume that someone didn't have the capacity or worse yet the heart to give to a particular cause or project. Meaning that decision is made for the donor not to even ask them to give a gift. Or... The leader will under-challenge someone because they once read too much into a discussion or heard a rumor that wasn't true. Let the donor's heart or burden make their decisions for the ministry partner. Many years ago, a couple gave $10,000 to a direct mail that our organization set out. When we met with them, they shared how they had been giving to a lot of other organizations. However, the husband came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ while in college. And when the opportunity to give to a college ministry presented itself, he was excited. In fact, he has become so excited about our efforts that this same couple has now given over a million dollars to our efforts. Another couple committed to be a, on a development advisory board that we have, even though they also serve on the board of a similar organization, simply because they had a burden for what we were doing. A well-known philanthropist once told me his giving was already planned out for the next three years and was especially overextended for the current year. But when he heard about some of the specific things we were doing, he got so excited that he gave 100000 that day. My wife and I live by the principle that even though we're fully committed in our giving to nonprofit organizations, if we saw an opportunity that was so great, we'd find the money to give somewhere. Recently, I did a video explaining that most donors are only giving a fraction of what they could because they're only giving out of current income and not out of assets. To watch that video, click the link above. Asset giving allows people who might not appear to have the capability or the capacity to give to do so and to do so generously. For faith-based donors, let God work on their hearts and they will give as led. Realize that when a potential donor or partner tells us that he has already committed his giving for a year, that he is just managing our expectations, and that should not be a negative reflection on us or the giving opportunity. Therefore, if they're not led to give, we shouldn't be disappointed. And remember, a no now does not always mean a no in the future. Ask if there would be a better time to present the opportunity again. A very successful businessman in Dallas gave $10 million to help produce the film Jesus about the life of Jesus Christ and soon after lost a fortune in the silver market. When asked about the loss, his son said, My dad may very well be remembered in history not for this great loss, but for the great contribution that has reached billions through this movie. 
Too many nonprofit leaders fall into these traps because of poor habits they've developed or more likely due to what I call stinking thinking. They have a diminished confidence in their own abilities or even self-worth and thus transfer that thinking over to the donors. That's called scarcity mentality and I address that mindset in a video that I'll include at the end of this video. Don't allow yourself to fall into those traps. Don't make decisions for your donors or worse yet, make assumptions about them. Use the real life lessons that I've shared in this video to spur you on to positively challenge current or potential donors with unbridled courage. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and leave a comment below listing which concepts you like best or wanted to start first. And if I miss anything valuable that you learn, share that with me in the comments so that it can get out to our entire community and make it better. If you enjoyed what you heard, please subscribe to this channel and share this with your friends and colleagues. There's no cost to you, but the more subscribers we have, the more this message gets out to others and the more we can all share in the wealth derived from the collective experience. If you want to find out what to do and say during a meeting with a donor, watch this video and raise more money than ever before and better our world. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.